lift is built inside a frame called a lift shaft. And there are lots of different types of lifts. There are glass lifts you can see inside. Lifts hidden behind doors. And lifts on the outside of buildings. When we want to use a lift, we call the lift by pressing one of these buttons. And when we press one of these buttons, it sends a message to a computer which then tells the lift which floor to go to to pick us up. On the wall of the lift car, there are buttons that show us the different floors that we can travel to. When I press the button, the lift doors will close. Like that. Down we go. Oh, looking over the edge makes me feel a bit wobbly. <laughs> if we look here at the screen, this tells us which floor we're on. Two. One. And go for ground floor. The lift door's open and we can get out. That was great. We travelled to the ground floor really quickly. But how does the lift car go up and down? I think we need to take a closer look. Inside the lift shaft, the lift car hangs on steel ropes fixed by an anchor. The steel ropes go over a wheel called a sheave. Hanging from the other end of the steel ropes is a heavyweight called a counterweight. The counterweight weighs almost the same as a lift full of people. When we want the lift car to go up, an electric motor turns the sheave wheel. As the sheave wheel turns, it moves the steel ropes, lowering the counterweight. As the counterweight moves down, the lift moves up to the top. When we want the lift to go down, the sheave wheel moves in the opposite direction. The steel ropes pull the counterweight up and the lift travels downwards to the bottom. That's really clever, isn't it? Shall we see all of those parts working for ourselves? Chris is the lift engineer. He's lowered the lift car and given me special permission to go on top of it so we can see the parts more clearly. Can you see? The steel ropes are fixed to that metal beam above my head. And the steel ropes are really thick and strong. Well, they come down to the top of the lift car, where they then wrap under the sheave wheels. The ropes go through the roof of the lift car and over to the other side, where they're fixed to a pulley. But how does the lift car know when to stop? On the top of each lift car, there's something called a sensor just here. And the sensor sends an invisible light between these two points. It's called infrared light. This infrared beam of light is broken each time the lift car moves to a new floor by a piece of metal called a floor vein. And each floor vein has a slightly different pattern depending on which floor we're on. This tells the lift car which floor is which, so it knows when to stop. I'm setting up my special cameras, so we can see how all these parts work together when the lift is moving. All set and ready to go, and Chris has given me special permission to go up and down on top of the lift car. And down we go! The sheave wheels are turning and the steel ropes are lowering the lift car down the lift shaft. This is so much fun! We're going to the ground floor, so the sensor on the top of the lift car is looking for the floor vein with the pattern that matches the ground floor. And look, there it is now. The floor vein has moved through the sensor to break the infrared light. Wow, that was brilliant! Can we go back up again? Certainly can. Now we're going back up. Let's see if we can see the counterweight as it passes the lift car. Look, there it is. Well, the counterweight is that huge metal silver block and it moves down as the lift moves up. 
and it weighs about one and a half times this lift car. It's really heavy. Did you hear that sound? That was the noise of the motor stopping. It was braking, telling the lift to stop. 